The date is March 26, 2020. On this day, I was on my way home from work when, as you just saw, I caught Norfolk Southern 1693 entering Watkins Yard. Once I got myself parked, I got out to see if there was any other trains coming to Valley, but there were none. While I was looking around, I just so happened to see this small little sign stuck to the tracks. If you remember from last episode, there was some track work being done in Watkins Yard. The workers were still here working on the tracks, and I believe this was their sign. I'm no expert when it comes to Norfolk Southern signs, but I do believe it's some sort of slowdown warning for trains that are approaching the workers. Later on that afternoon, I was informed from a friend of mine that there was a Canadian Pacific led train heading up the CSX Northern subdivision and it was about to reach Columbus. So I ended up driving out to Parsons Yard and sure enough, there was a Canadian Pacific led train waiting for its crew in the yard. I was parked at the certified gas station at the corner of Parsons and Daring Avenue waiting for the train to depart. As I was waiting, the Burt Line's beer run was then given permission to depart Parsons Yard. The beer run is a train CSX operates between here and the Anheuser-Busch plant in Worthington, Ohio along the Columbus Line subdivision, also known as the Burt Line. Leading the beer run today was the ironically numbered CSX 2019 and EMD GP38-3. It was built in 1979 as Conrail 6006, beginning life as a GP38-2. The engine, along with many others across the CSX system, were rebuilt in 2014 as part of CSX's rebuilding program. As CSX 2019 was exiting the yard, a CSX grain train was then pulling into the yard at the same time. It was being led by CSX 376 in its classic YN2 paint scheme. The plan was for CSX 376 to stop at a grade crossing in the yard so the old crew could get off and a new crew could get on. Once the new crew was on board, they would then take the train out of the yard and take it for a run across the northern sub to Kentucky.
Although this spot is a good place to see CSX trains leaving or entering Parsons Yard, I still advise caution when going here. This particular part of Columbus is not a very safe place to stay at. Once 376's train was out of the way, dispatch then gave permission to the CP train to leave Parsons Yard for a trip up the Columbus subdivision not to be confused with the Burt Line. After seeing the train here, I then relocated to the Greenlawn Avenue Bridge near German Village. Here, Norfolk Southern's western branch to the left parallels CSX's Columbus subdivision to the right. Leading this ethanol train today was Canadian Pacific 8153 and 8799. CP 8799 is a GE ES44 AC built in 2006. CP8153 is a rebuilt GE AC4400 CWM. It was built in 1997 as CP9640 as a GE AC44 CW. In 2019, CP sent 9640 along with many other AC44 CWs back to GE to get rebuilt as AC4400 CWMs, and today, 8153 is wearing its freshly new CP Beaver 2 paint scheme. A little later, I then caught the train one more time at LM Cabin in downtown Columbus.
train left, I then went home as well. Although LM Cabin is a good place to see trains at in Columbus, again this is a bad part of town, so if you do visit here, you do have to be careful. We now find ourselves back at Valley Crossing, this time on April 2nd, 2020. Again, I was on my way home from work when I saw this NS Intermodal train working Watkins Yard. The reason why the footage is a bit downgraded was because I was filming this on my phone and I had left my camera's SD card back at the house. The footage looks great as long as you don't zoom in. I then noticed a northbound NS Manifest train coming to the crossing. I was going to leave it, but when I saw what was the power on this train, I figured I'd stay and see it. Reading 1067 was on the train today with its weathered Reading paint scheme. Once the front of the train got past, I then broke off, but then I regretted it as I saw in the end two former Penn Central grain cars and some sort of Norfolk and Western maintenance of white car on the end. Oh well. Anyway, after that, we now go to April 20th, 2020. On this day, my brother and I went out to London, Ohio to go get a delivery. On our way home, we drove along NS's Dayton District and pulled over at the Glade Run Railroad Crossing so I could show my brother one of the few remaining USNS tricolor light signals on this district. Sure enough, when we pulled over, I then noticed that the signal was green and about 20 minutes later, here came this NS Manifest train heading towards the crossing.
After the train got past us, we then drove down Columbus Cincinnati Road 142. When we were nearing West Jefferson, we then caught up with the train and got some great pacing action on this road. After pacing the train, we then drove ahead of it to see it again at CP 146 along Park in Lincoln Village. Here the train will pull past us and stop to change crews. a few interesting things on board this train today. The first being Norfolk Southern 3555, an EMD SD40-2. It was built in 1979 for the Burlington Northern Railroad as 8081. It continued to work for the BN's predecessor, BNSF, until it was sold in 2011 to Helm Financial. Then in 2014, it was then sold again to Norfolk Southern. Being an SD40-2 with Burlington Northern Heritage is one thing, but what caught my attention of 3555 was what was written on the side of its cab. Assigned to Conneaut, Ohio for Freeze Beater Service. From what I was able to research, Freeze Beater is a type of system installed onto 3555 that's designed to keep water or any other types of liquids from becoming frozen during periods of cold weather. With this type of system installed, a crew operating this locomotive during times of winter could theoretically shut down the locomotive without any fear of any important liquids inside turning into ice. Since 3555 was assigned to work out of Conneaut, Ohio, it's only appropriate since the weather up there can get very harsh during the winter. Besides 3555, Norfolk Southern 3532, 3564, and 3565 are also equipped with freeze beater systems. The other interesting thing on this train today was this Kansas City Southern Del Mexico Autorack car. Normally I don't pay attention to graffiti on the sides of cars, but in this case I had to make an exception because painted on the side of this car was Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory was one of my most favorite cartoon shows growing up as a kid, and seeing him on the side of this freight car was pretty interesting to me despite it being graffiti. The person responsible for this graffiti is an infamous New Orleans native going by the alias Reznor Achu, as shown on the car. The reason why he's infamous down there is because he's been known to graffiti his alias name onto many things such as rail cars, buildings, and even a vintage New Orleans streetcar. The latter was what might have done him in, because just after the streetcar was graffitied, police arrested a suspect that was nearby the area at the time. I won't say the name of the suspect here, but if you want to know, 
I suggest you look up the name Reznor Achu on Google. You'll find the story there. Despite the artist's reputation, I had to say he did a great job of painting Dexter. The artist even included one of Dexter's little robots on the side. Now, I know I don't have to say this, but just as a precaution, please don't do graffiti. It's not only illegal, but if you're doing it on freight cars, you're also trespassing on railroad property. So, please don't get in trouble or do this. Once we were done looking at the graffiti, we then went home. The next day, I was back at Valley Crossing once again heading home from work. I just so happened to pull over because I noticed a green signal for a northbound Norfolk Southern ethanol train coming to the crossing. Where we started is now where we end today's video. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you are having a great day. See you later!